Hello and welcome to Last Week, Right Now, with me, Mick Riggers. We're going to be giving you an in-depth look of last week's news. Last week kicked off with more conservative infighting renewed. More names have been added to the vote of no confidence list, which is given to the 1922 committee, uh, to call for Theresa May to be deposed. A uh, government minister suggested Brexit might not even happen, Hammond called for nothing to change after Brexit at Davos, and more MPs called for Hammond to be sacked. Boris Johnson undermined Theresa May with a call for more funding to the NHS, and also received more calls to be sacked. Jacob Rees-Mogg suggested in Parliament uh, last week that the civil service was manufacturing data to make it seem that Brexit would cause economic crisis no matter what happened. Conservative minister confirmed this allegation before backtracking on the stand in the House of Commons. This kind of uh, rhetoric is, well, recognisable from the 1930s in Germany. And conservative fears of council election losses in the spring are causing more tension within the party. In the midst of conservative infighting, Theresa May had to run off to China to try to make trade agreements in the run-up to Brexit. You know, usually when a political leader leaves the country, that's when all of the their enemies come out of the woodwork, uh, they, they start attacking and start trying to make plans to undermine them. In this case, it seems when Theresa May leaves the country, the Conservatives all go quieter. Apparently, she might be the problem. She failed to call out human rights abuses and neglected to talk about the trade war that China is engaged with uh, the EU right now, undercutting steel and other such industries. And for doing this, she managed to earn the nickname Auntie May. Capita, a massive infrastructure company that is reliant and relied upon by the British government, is facing profit losses currently. There's uh, worries that this might be another Carillion in the making, whether the government will continue to make contracts with Capita during this troublesome time, as they did with Carillion, is yet to be seen. This calls into question the culture of privatisation that we seem to have in this country at the moment. More and more people are calling for renationalisation, which is great news. It was the State of the Union address in America. Joe Kennedy spoke for the Democrats and said nothing. He didn't introduce any policies. He didn't offer any current policies that the Democrats have. He spent his entire time saying what he was against, saying oh, we don't like the way that people are being treated and that we think that this is wrong. He didn't offer any solution whatsoever. This is in a stark contrast with Bernie Sanders' State of the Union address, which hit policy after policy and actually only lasted half the time of uh, Joe Kennedy's speech. Sanders made his usual calls for Medicare for all, free tuition and environmental stewardship. Trump's State of the Union address was somewhat terrifying as he changed rhetoric on North Korea, talking less about their weapons and more about their regimes. This obviously rang alarm bells when people compared it to the Bush administration's change in rhetoric leading up to the war with Iraq. Of course, Trump also spent the majority of the time in this speech chest beating and building up his own ego, talking about fake figures of ratings and turnouts and, you know, you've heard it all before by now. The Nunes memo was leaked to much media attention uh, last week, although what there is to say about it, I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's clearly been overblown. Uh, essentially, the memo suggested that the Republican Senator Nunes 
uh, accused the FBI of political bias. The FBI then accused Nunes in return of political bias. I think, to be honest, this simply underlines divisions uh, within the US establishment currently. Um, it's being used as a talking point. And now for Mix Pick of the Week. So, I like to, every so often, have a flick through some of the right-wing papers, uh, like the Daily Mail, the Express, the Sun, and um, I came across uh, this article. Uh, this article is from the Daily Mail. Um, it was reported in a few of the other right-wing newspapers, and I have some serious concerns about about this issue. Um, I'll read you the article, and uh, I'll, I'll break it down at certain points. So... Britain's first private police force has caught 400 criminals with a 100% conviction rate after taking on cases regular officers are too busy to look at. Yeah, I think you can see my problem with this already. So it says here, the country's first private police force is investigating hundreds of crimes that regular officers are too busy to look at. A firm led by former Scotland Yard senior officers has successfully prosecuted more than 400 criminals and is now carrying out murder inquiries. TMI, that's spelled E-Y-E, -E, uh, which has a 100% conviction rate. How many times have they mentioned the conviction rate already? They're so clearly biased towards it from the very, very off that I've got to, you know, how are they, how are they going to talk about it? Well, the, the next part of the, of the article is essentially just an advert. So the company, the country's first de facto private police force, is operating against a backdrop of rising crime rates and police budget cuts. Its activities include a service called My Local Bobby, costing wealthy households up to £200 a month for guards to patrol their streets. Three high-profile murder investigations that police have been unable to complete, including one case dogged by allegations of corruption and cover-up. Help in cases of rape, missing persons, burglary, theft, stalking and blackmail. Of course, this is all if you're going to pay for it. So what they're doing here, and the article does talk about this later on, uh, what they're doing here is is creating a two-tier system of saying, well, you can get the regular police force or you can, for this amount of money a month, you can have this additional police force that will do more for you and be more focused on you. It's essentially a booper to the NHS. In the past two years, the company has brought successful private prosecutions against 403 criminals for fraud, intellectual property, theft, and other offences. A total of 43 were jailed. So, when they say fraud and intellectual property theft, what they're talking about is, is people selling knock-off bags and clothes uh, with designer labels on them and, and you know, that, that aren't real. Things like that. And then they say, well, we'll take you to court. We'll get a conviction because all they have to do is go down and film this person selling these products and they've got it. They've got their conviction. This is why their conviction rate is so high at 100%. And then after that, after they've got their conviction, the person, uh, the convicted person has to pay a fine, obviously, but then they also have to pay for TMI's uh, spending on investigating this crime. So they're making these small amounts of money as these uh, big companies are paying them to also uh, go and do these things. So they're, they're breaking it in from this. The next part of the article says the company is now expanding its services beyond predominantly financial investigations. That's the worrying part to me. What what else are they going to get into? I mean, it, it said on their website that they did an awful lot of uh, undercover work. So, I mean, who, who are they investigating? I know that there are police within the Green Party. There are police in, in the trade union movements undercover. 
monitoring what's going on. So what are this company going to be looking into? Well, they, well they're going to be looking into whatever they have the highest bid for. The rich are going to essentially be able to put spies into any organization. And they call it a police force, a private police force. The article seems to suggest after that that we should move over to this being our full-time police force. They say, it comes as police chiefs admit they do not have the money to investigate high-volume crimes. Well, yeah, because they're being underfunded. Right, why don't they have enough money to investigate the crimes they need to investigate? Because they aren't getting the money to investigate the crimes they need to investigate. That's, it's as simple as that. This is literally the definition of privilege. Privilege, the word comes from two words. Private and law. That's exactly what this is. Thank you for listening. I've been Mick Riggers and that was Last Week Right Now. We'll be back again next week. Uh, please, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe and share. And don't forget, right here, right now, we'll be back at the end of the month.